Well, we're down here with the piggies. I love the piggies. These are red wattles. Uh, you'll notice right under their neck they have little wattles. These are a heritage breed. They're very, very hardy outside. In the early Americas, they did not confine hogs at all. They would let them run wild, and then about twice a year, they would gather them up, and each farmer knew which pig was his because they had notches in their ear that would identify who they belonged to. So they'd round them all up, take the ones out that they want to butcher, and then let them go again. So they lived in the wild. And these pigs are bred, and they're extremely hardy out here. They have a lot more back fat than the traditional uh, pork that you would see in a confinement facility. It, uh, one of our older ones had about three and a half inches of back fat, which is pretty significant when you say the industry standard's about 0.7 inches. But these guys also do not need the climate control that a confined hog does. They, when it gets cold, they actually burrow down and make a little pit and they all sit there like sausages around each other and it'll rain and snow on them and they really don't need a shelter. I really only put a shelter out below about 35 degrees because otherwise they never use it. They do not like to be inside those shelters. They'd rather be out wandering and they gather up to go to sleep at night. Very clean animals in general. They like to uh, uh, keep their waste off in a separate area of where they're, they are. So they don't like to eat where they drop their waste. They don't like to forage where they drop their waste. So they go to a specific area and they keep it pretty clean. They don't smell. A lot of the smell that you have from the confined pigs comes from soy. When you feed them soy, it creates a tremendous amount of methane in their waste, which creates a lot of smell. And the other fact is, when you have 10,000 pigs in a single building, it's going to smell. But if you put 10,000 people in a single facility, and you fed them the same thing every day and didn't give them access to bathrooms, well, they would stink too. But when they're outside and they're foraging, they don't smell because they're naturally, the predators would find them if they did. So these guys don't, they're nice and clean. So what pigs generally eat are roots. I think 39 or 40% of their diet is actually roots. Small roots from things like this as well as bigger roots from trees. So if we leave the pigs too long, they will go from eating down these weeds and the smaller roots and the scrub, and they'll begin to eat the roots of the bigger tree. That's why I have to really keep an eye on the area around the base of the trees. Because if I see them start to burrow in that area and go for those tree roots, then I need to move them on to a different area. So how do we keep them in? Well. First of all, we start in a small pen with actual fencing on the outside, but we put a hot wire on the inside perimeter. That teaches them to hot wire. Pigs, unlike other animals, when they get shocked, they actually go forward. So if they get shocked by that wire, they go forward and go through it, and they would escape. But what we teach them is, if they get shocked and they go forward, they run into another fence, they eventually learn to go backwards. So once they learn, once I'm out here and I see them go up to that wire and stop before it or back up when a pig is, is playing around and he sees that wire and he backs up, now I know that they're trained enough, I can put them out in the woods with just a single strand of wire and that's at their nose height because they'll be down burrowing sometimes, but they generally don't jump over the wire. Anything at their nose height, they're gonna stop, look at it and say, mm, I don't wanna go there. So even we had a 750, 800 pound sow and uh, she'd walk up to that wire and she wouldn't cross it. In fact, it's a little hard to move them. Once I do bring the wire down, they get like a mental idea of where that boundary is and they don't want to move on. But as you can see, put a little food down and uh, they'll move on to anything. The other thing about pigs is people say that they're very destructive to the land. They're actually extremely productive for the land if they're allowed enough space and if they're allowed to move on. As, as, you, as I said before, I look for signs that they need to move. And they can actually go in here and as the goats came in earlier and they started taking a lot of these weeds down, if you can pan over there and see those tall weeds, that, those tall weeds were all over this section down here. So what we did was we released goats, and you can see they ate down most of these weeds. Now these pigs will go in behind the goats, they eat a little bit different. They're omnivores instead of 
grazers or browsers, and so they'll eat a little bit different, and the key is they'll start to burrow down in the soil and begin to eat the worms and the grubs and things that uh, basically grow down there in the soil, and they'll flip up these logs, and when they do that, they aerate the soil, and they, they uh, provide fertilizer for the soil, but more importantly, they open up the floor so that the grasses can come through. So you can rehabilitate an area by running goats and pigs and chickens, and they will actually allow that seed bank to produce forth some pasture. Oh, you got a friend there? <laughs> yeah, they can actually bring the pasture forth that's, not, that's there, we just haven't seen it yet. I just noticed this stump here by my foot, and it's pulled out of the ground. Pigs love to knock stumps out, and they like to get down and get the worms and the grubs out of there. Well, this is a relatively small one. I probably could have kicked that out myself. But when you have like a 750, 800 pound sow, they will pull out some impressively sized stumps. And not only will they pull them out, they'll dig down around the stump. It's a great stump remover. They'll dig down and create like a little hole in there and clear it out so you can fill it with dirt and, and have just level ground. Especially important not in pasture areas where you're gonna have a sickle bar mower or any type of mower out there. You don't want those little stumps. And hogs are great at clearing those little things out. We have a compost pile where we take and we take all the horse manure that's in the barn and the old hay and stuff and we throw it in there. Then we at least put the pigs in here. And you see right down here, they burrow into this and they churn it up. And that aerates the inside of it, allows it to heat up and essentially turn into great compost. And you can see the little hot wire there so they don't go too far back. And I'll move that around so that they have more access to the compost. But once they churn all that up and oxygenate it, it's going to heat up again. And next year, this is going to be great, great stuff for the garden. These guys are out here in the pasture. And I've now got them under the black walnut trees and the oak trees because the acorns are dropping. And they go around and they vacuum up these acorns. They love acorns. And they'll be heading to the woods soon to get all those acorns and hickory nuts and black walnuts because they love them all. And the other thing they do out in this pasture here, you see it nice and clean and green and they eat the grasses. But when they smell grub, you know, from beetles, Japanese beetles and stuff that lay their eggs, when they smell them, they dig them up. So they churn up. This is mostly acorns and grubs that they're churning up here. And they will eat them up and then we'll take the harrow and level that out, throw some grass seed. And we have beautiful grass and no grubs. So they are grubberators. They're very good at it. If we leave them too long, they'll damage the roots on the big trees. But if we leave them just the right time, they will damage the roots on the invasive species like the honeysuckle. So it's a timing thing with these guys. You guys are noisy. You really think I've got food? I don't, I really don't have any food. I don't. Well, here we are at Redgate Farm talking about our pigs again. I love my piggies. Uh, Danielle sometimes gets a little jealous because I have such an affection for these pigs. Now, we are in the grazing area number seven now. We started off in a smaller area teaching them to hotwire, moved them into the pasture, so there was still a fenced area around, but they were being introduced to that hotwire and not getting outside of the hotwire. Marched them all the way down to the far end of the two and a half, nice big open area for them, and then transitioned them into the woods. Now, pig's diet is about 38% roots, and so they go through and they eat those roots of the honeysuckle, and that's, uh, that's a lot of nutrition for them. But you really got to move them a lot in the woods because there's not nearly as much forage as you would have in, in a pasture area like we have out there. So once they get in this set last area here, it's about two acres. It's a very <coughs> large area, but the great thing about it is I'm standing under a mighty oak tree, and they absolutely love acorns, and acorns are full of protein. And so they go around this forest floor and they vacuum up the acorns, the hickories, the black walnuts, the hazelnuts, 
all those nuts that are on the ground, they pick those up, they flip over logs, and they eat away at those worms, the leeches down by the creek, they just have a smorgasbord of things to eat. But that's why this last area is so large. Because first of all, they're large, as you'll see in a second here, they're a lot bigger than they were. But the other thing is I want them to have a good variety of diet. So I give them a large area so they can go to the lowlands, into the upperlands, under the nut trees, over by the honeysuckle, and down in the creek area. So let's go down in the woods and see if we can find those little buggers. Okay, you can see this hot wire goes through the woods. I can hear my piggies right over there. We're going to go down by the pond area and the creek area, and I'm going to entice them with a little pumpkin. So let's go get them. Hey, guys. Hey, piggies. Come here. Here, I got some pumpkin. Here you go. All right, so they're out here foraging. This downed oak tree, when it rains and stuff, there's a lot of bugs, worms, and creatures that come up under this wood. So they'll come and flip these logs up, find out what they can eat. I'm cheating here because I'm feeding them some pumpkin. Here's some pumpkin. That's some pumpkin. <coughs> Come here, guys. That's some acorns, too. Well, they, I guess there's plenty of food down here. They don't even, they don't even want pumpkin. They're so well fed in these forests that you'd think this would be like Twinkies, but they got a lot of food down here. Now, these pumpkin seeds are actually a good vermifuge. It keeps them from getting worms. And usually they attack them, but again, when they have all this forage, they just don't come after the treats because they don't need any treats. They're stuffed, right, guy? Come here. Pretty dull, so breed. Here, you can have that. So some people uh, wonder with our steep terrain if the pigs can handle it, and they actually love the steep terrain. And uh, this last move we do, sometimes we do it when it's really hot out, is we actually give them some access uh, to this watering hole down here. And uh, pigs will actually swim, but they don't prefer to, but they will. But uh, typically they go to the shallow area, they roll in the mud, get a nice coating of mud, and that keeps them cool. So uh, a lot of times they run down this ravine, but that ravine over there is really steep, and they are fine going up and down that. It builds up muscle, keeps them in shape, and makes for some good meat. I think along here he's trying to get crawdads. These, those crawdads sit in the uh, in the bank nest there, and these guys dig down and they like to eat those. And sometimes they just like to blow bubbles. The health of the animal is often indicated by the health of their coat. And uh, people are often amazed when these girls get out in the sun and these boys get out in the sun, they have a very shiny and, uh, and actually very soft coat. Well, this is the beauty of how the hogs used to live. And, you know, people think they destroy the land. They're abusive to the land. Uh, I like Joel Salen. And, hey, there's a large bullfrog right there. I like when he says they really massage the land. Uh, if you leave them in a confined area too long, they will destroy it. Any animal will destroy a small confined area if left in too long. But if they're given a lot of space and moved around a lot, and you rotate them based on the seasons, right now it's fall, okay, so I got a lot of nut drop. And that's why I bring them back into the woods during the fall season, because they're such a heavy nut drop. I think they're liking the pumpkins now. Look at him use that nose as a shovel. He pushes stuff out of the way. He exposes roots, nuts, worms, bugs, and just goes right through here, picking whatever they can out of the soil, but not necessarily tearing things up, just simply pushing trash out of the way with those powerful noses. They start to really tear things up when they run out of food, and they have to forage deeper and deeper. But right now, it's just a gentle massaging the surface just inch by inch.
All right, well, that wraps it up for pastured pork. Like all our animals here at Redgate Farm, we like to rotate them, and there's a lot of reasons why. But you can see how happy our pork is, and we absolutely love the red wattle. They're very, very resilient to living outside, foraging through the woods, as well as Tamworth and Mangalista and a lot of different of the heritage breeds. So I would recommend you support a farmer that raises the heritage breed the way pigs should be raised outside in rotational pastures and forest.